Hey everybody, this is Ryan Temp from RT Road Tanks Guides. First of all, I'd like to wish everybody a happy holidays, even though it's far very late. I've been very busy over the holidays, didn't have much time to upload anything. But now, I decided to upload something interesting for you guys. Alright, today's topic is Update 8.3. This is a very iconic update that has been introduced to World Tanks. First of all, it offers several rebalancing for the other tech trees, such as Soviet, German, American, French, English, or British, whatever you prefer, and China. And adding a new tech tree, the Chinese tech tree. Now, I heard at first that the Chinese tech tree was delayed. It was supposed to be scheduled to be released in the 8.2 update, but Wargaming, the company that made World Tanks, withdrew it and delayed it for a bit until 8.3 because they believed the Chinese tech tree was not perfected. They thought that there was some balancing issues and such and such. Like me personally, I was a bit dismayed at the subject that World Tanks delayed such an iconic update. But then again, I'd say it might be, it probably is worth it because like, they hadn't delayed it. I remember back in 8.2, like, the Chinese tanks were a bit too much like the Soviet tanks. So, Wargame decided to retune them a bit. Maybe do a bit more research on Chinese engineering and make them a bit better. So all in all, even though I was dismayed at first, I think they haven't proved the uh, Chinese tech tree enough. So that it may be really, really properly in 8.3 and be enjoyed at the fullest capacity. Alright. The highlight of this update is, of course, the Chinese tech tree. Ch the Chinese tech tree is the sixth nation that is added along with the other tech trees. And in the Chinese tech tree, the Chinese tech tree contains three distinct groups of tanks. The first group I'll be discussing is the tanks that were imported to China during World War II and also the interwar period I'd say. First, is the, first comes the Renault NC31. This was an imported tank from France and yeah, I was, I was during the interwar period. It's the starter tank for the Chinese people. Now we have the Vickers Mark E Type B. This is an imported tank from Britain, made by yours truly, the Vickers Company. The Chinese Chiha tank. This was a uh, well, not imported. This was a captured tank during World War II after China had won the war, pushed Japan out of China. Um, this tank, this tank is a captured tank. And the Japanese, they left a bunch of those behind and they withdrawn from China during the war. Next we have the M5A1 Stewart. This was an import from the US in World War II and was a had seen action. Although, I just want to say first, I think they should have put the M4 Sherman in here because M4 Sherman, well at least a variant of that I think, was also imported to China during World War II. I guess if they imported it into the tech tree, it would have been a bit weird and maybe cause some balancing issues, I'd say. I'm going to continue on to the imported tanks. Next we have the Type T-34. This was imported from Russia. It is pretty much the same as the T-34 tank, more or less. And then the last imported tank was the IS-2. This was imported from the Soviet Union and in terms of gameplay it's identical to the IS more or less. It has slightly less arm, arm on the front, only 90. But other than that, people who have, who have played the IS will be very familiar with IS too. Ah, other than that, historically it was like this too. So like, yeah, it's historically accurate too. Armor is in similarity to the original IS. 
What I have to say about the IS-2 is that it's sort of like um from the it's sort of like a play like this. The IS and the IS-2 is sort of akin to how the KV-1 goes to the KV-1S. The IS-2 seems to be a slightly lighter version of the original IS. It has the same gun, well, except it has shared the same top gun. So yeah, it's sort of like, like that transition between the KV-1 and KV-1S. The IS and the IS-2 are sort of like those two tanks. I'm going to move on to the second group of tanks now. The second group of tanks were tanks that were actually put into service by the Chinese during the period that World of Tanks covered. The period that, that World of Tanks, the time period that World of Tanks covers is from World War II to the early Cold War stage. So, the ones that were actually made by Chinese people and put into service, I think the only one on here would be the Type 58, which, it, which was a licensed copy of the Soviet Type 30 uh, was it? yeah it's a licensed copy of the Soviet T-34-85 very it's also pretty plays pretty similar to that people who have played the T-34-85 will be familiar with the Type 58 so that's the that's the second group uh, well yeah uh, uh, I don't think I'll call this a group bank, but I'll just say the Type 58 is its own anomalic tank because it's the only tank in this tree that the Chinese people actually produced by themselves. The next group of tanks are the experimental tanks. These were e these tanks were either um, existed only in blueprints and plans or uh, were beginning were starting to be built but then their projects were cancelled. The fifty nine sixteen, the one twenty one, the one thirteen, the one and the one ten, the I believe the T thirty four dash two, the T four thirty four dash one were also part of this group. These tanks were these tanks were only existed in blueprints or were in experimental stages. The final group of tanks were our prototype our prototype tanks that were tested by the Chinese government but were never put into service because of because of their perceived uh, impracticability. They were thought to not be very practical even though they were good designs, they were thought to not be practical in the field. That was the WZ-131, the WZ-111-1-4, WZ-132, and WZ-120. So all the tanks starting with um, WZ are government prototypes that were tested but never put into full production. Alright, moving on, I think I'll talk about the unique properties of the Chinese tanks. Um, none of these tanks are particularly unique. The from tier one to tier five, these aren't really unique. These are pretty much um tanks that were imported from other nations. Uh, the Type 58 plays the the same as the T-345, so I wouldn't say that that's a unique tank either. So anyway, these unique properties don't really apply to these. I'm first to say the Chinese tanks were also influenced by Soviet design and later on they moved to their own own form and later on they had their own form of Chinese engineering. It was, it was unique, it was different enough from the Soviets to be unique. But yeah, um, I was going to mention one of the most iconic things about the Chinese tanks or the light tanks. Yes, the light tanks. In other nations, you see that light tanks were only good for scouting. Like, take for example, the let's see, where's that? Where's that T fifty dash two? Right there. Like, take for example the T fifty dash two. 
it's often put into very high tier battles, such as tier 8 battles, tier 9, even tier 10. And a T-50-2, with only at best 76mm guns, cannot damage the tanks of such high tier. So all they were, all they're really good for in game is scouting and base cap and SPG elimination. I'd say. But yeah, they they didn't have any real combat ability. Well, that was practical at least. Same goes with other nations. Their light, their light tanks were very light indeed, but they were often put into really high tier matches and one good for scaling base cap and SPG elimination no real practical combat ability however the Chinese tanks their light tanks except for these imported ones are unique in a way that they have a good combat ability let's look at the 5916 at first and tier 6 and she gets a 76 millimeter gun with an auto loader. Not bad. This is this is compared to comparable to the tanks of other nations at first. But it has really good sloping, and it is pretty fast, pretty decent tank I'd say. But the 59-16 still doesn't show the real highlight of the light tanks yet. Let's move on to the. Let's see which tank should I talk about? Let's talk about the WZ-132 to make an example of it. For one, the China, for one, China is, the Chinese tank tree is the only tank tree that has light tanks going up to tier 8. So yeah, no other nation has it. Very unique property of the Chinese tank tree. And earlier why, about, why I said about the Chinese light tanks having a real ability to fight, they actually get 100 millimeter guns. These are these guns are comparable to the guns of medium tanks. So yeah, these do have a real ability to fight. Let's look at a top gun. Look at it. 189 average penetration with standard AP shells. Has more with, with a composite rigid shell. And it has a fair fair amount of damage. 250. That's fair for a light tank. So yeah, these tanks. When put into high tier battle, it can do scouting, it can do base cap, it also does SPG elimination even better than that of the other nation's light tanks. But most of all, these have real combat ability, just like almost to the ability of medium tanks. Although the armor is still light tank level armor, they don't, they're not as well armored as medium tanks. Well, they have good, good fighting potential. Like, the, these light tanks could potentially harass other medium tanks and heavy tanks. And then, maybe provide some flanking and fire assist support for the mediums and heavy the, of the team. And maybe, and they have much higher survivability than other nations' light tanks when in battle one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah, these are definitely good light tanks. Right. Another unique property to mention is the armor of the Chinese of the Chinese tanks. Like overall you see, it might be deceiving at first, the armor of the Chinese tanks look, looks a bit thin. So you see a 90, 120, 120. The heavy like let's talk, let's use the heavy tanks for this example. Since heavy tanks are supposed to be the heavily most heaviest armored tanks in the game. Like see, they only have 120 as their front armor. But that's actually pretty deceiving if you think about it. Let's look at the 113. I particularly like the 113. How, how about we look at it in the garage? 113. Yeah. Even though it only has 120 millimeter of frontal hull armor, the frontal hull armor is just so well sloped. Like this is about like a like I think it's around sixty, maybe even seventy 
degree angle, like this hev heavily increases the effect of armor. Effect of armor is different from the thickness thickness of the armor because if it's going down at the angle like this, it's going to 120 millimeters of armor. However, the shell is coming like this, coming straight at it at the same elevation that this tank is with an enemy tank. It's got to be dealing with, I'd say, um, uh, two, maybe 200, 200, 240 millimeters of effective armor. If a shell is coming at it like this, like look at, look at my, take a look at my cursor. So yeah, um, it's easy to see that first, but these front, frontal hull armor is actually pretty strong in retrospect. So keep that in mind. The frontal hull armor is still very strong due to the sloping. However, there is also a disadvantage of the sloping, however, due to the fact that it's highly reliant on sloping for the protection. If a tank comes at you from a hill and shoots down at you, it will go through the tank like a hot knife through butter. So you gotta be careful when fight. Be really careful when fighting at tanks that are above you, because they can fire downwards and damage you within seconds. But, if you can angle your par your armor really good, and fire the same level as someone else, or at an elevation, you'll be able to bounce a lot of shots with the, with, with the armor of the Chinese tanks, especially when rolling. Alright, moving on, I also have to discuss that Chinese tanks are able to use heat shells without having a derp gun or being SBG. I think the heat shells start at start to be used at tier six. Am I wrong? No, that's tier seven then. Yeah, I'm right. Like instead of using armor piercing composite rigid shells, like most of the other other tank trees do. This tank tree, this tank tree actually allows high explosive MP tank shells starting at tier seven. And this is a, and this is on the light tank, so yeah, that adds to the fighting ability of the light tank. High explosive anti tank, high explosive anti tank ammo most of the time will have good penetration good penetration walls, of course, they'll have far superior penetration to, AP, to normal AP shells and they'll still have very good armor for one, it doesn't lose its penetration when firing at a long range like APCR does so that's a benefit Chinese tanks get heat shells without, have, without having to use howitzer guns or being SPG moving on we also, I'm also going to discuss the reload speed Surprisingly for Chinese tanks, the reload speed is pretty quick. We look at a top top we look at a top speed of 113. It goes up, it goes 50 kilometers per hour at the speed limit, so that's pretty good for the Chinese tanks. And um, yeah, that's about what I have to say. Got good look, good profile, good penetration. Chinese tanks are very good all around. They don't have anything specific to focus on. So yeah, like the Chinese tank tree is for the all-around player. You can fill in a variety of roles. Roles. You have good speed, good gun, like good armor. Nothing really outstanding, but good all. It's good all around. So that's good. Well, I think I have to mention some other things about the Chinese tank tree. First of all, it has a lack of tank destroyers and SPGs. Um, I'm not sure about those two. They might be released in a later patch because this is what Wargaming really does. They release a basic tank tree of a nation and in a later patch they add extra tanks to it. Like take for example the French tree at first. It only had I think two branches and now and then they added in the tank destroyers and SPG. So yeah, like they might add them in later on. I don't know. Just listen to what Wargaming has to say. Also to mention, um, in addition to the fact that tank, Chinese tanks do not fight well against enemies above them, 
Um, due to their, the fact that they were on sloped armor. Their gun elevation is all, also rather poor. And, yeah, their guns can't point up very well. That's all I, that's all I have to say about the Chinese tanks. Anyway, I think I'll show you some gameplay of the Chinese tank 113 in action. The 113 is my favorite tank so far, so let's go. Waiting time is gonna be long with the F server. Uh, oh, got that pretty quick. Hey, at the top of the list, pretty good. Oh, another thing to discuss about Chinese tanks. When you're at the bottom of the list, you should use your speed to your advantage and help do scouting even when you're a medium tank. Well, that's for the specifically Chinese created tanks, not the important tanks. When you're at the middle of the list, however, well, when you're at tier 10, you're never going to really be at the middle of the list unless you are not a heavy tank. Then the middle of the list, like around here, you should provide fire support and flanking support for your team. But really, at the All right, let's get a game loaded up here. Let's play on Poker Off now. Got pretty good. Um, in game, it seems to put the Chinese tanks pretty high up in the list. I don't know if this will be just a subject, just a prop, just a thing of the test server for now, or will it be in the actual game? What? They seem, they seem to really like Chinese tanks for the so far up in the list. There's a Russian guy trying to back check things back to <sighs> Let's start the game. Let's go! Many games are Chinese tanks are very beautiful. So much beautiful to come to the game on that game. Heavy. But guys, that should be no, just a no. My frames are good low right now. And my ping's a bit high. I don't know for some reason the ping on test server is always going to be always going to be so so high. We only have about 50 milliseconds. Like now I'm just getting like a badass ping. I think I'll help along these um, tank support. I want to get covered with the wild Go on it, right? So I'll make sure I always angle my arm That's the one for some reason Oh by the way, I'm not even mentioning that the Chinese The, the sheer turn heavy is the one for the other Pretty good HP, about 300. Very good. He doesn't even want. That's why they can't be 100. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, 100. I'm also gonna to to show you some of the limitations of the. You know, you only go so high. I've seen uh, the tank elevate, the gun elevation go much higher. Penetration.
Elevation level that is so like not, not good for the game. Ricochet! Even I think that's all like my, my tank annoying kill medium or fighter heavy. Other than that, the tiny tank guns are really good against the really heavy tank, like the bows in the U100. Usually more suits here, taking down more lightly armor. Like, look at this. That one bounced! That's a tank on the main top U100. Even though German tanks usually don't have much of a armor. We didn't penetrate the JFM V100 seems to be such a popular We've just digged him! this up Chinese 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 tanks overall the all-around tanks they don't particularly specialize in any sort of role they're adaptable to very various roles like I showed you in the 113 even though I grumbled a bit about it about the lack of penetration um it can be a frontline support it can be a frontline fighter like when you saw a lot of their sh a lot a lot of their shots seem to have Ricochet from the front, if you angle it properly, it amplifies the effect. Um, let's, go re let's go reload speed, so it's good at being a support tank also. Uh, you could probably do some limited scouting with it, due to that fast 50km speed limit. And you can flank, and you can flank, you can flank really well with this tank. Alright, so anyway, what do I have to say about the 8.3 update? You know, Chinese things are going to be pretty cool when they come out. That's what that's only for the for the real Chinese made tanks, by the way. Not those imports. Sorry, imports. You're not you're not actually Chinese. All right, this is this is Ryan Tim, and I'm I'm out. I'll see you next time. RT World Tanks. Guys, like, comment, and subscribe for more videos to come.